Hey, this is Stephen Chen from Rich Brains, where we don't take a healthy lifestyle and enriched brain for granted. Today we're going to talk about masks, which could seem a bit old in 2021, but believe me, right now it's more relevant than ever, and you're going to have loads of takeaways that are going to benefit you immediately. So, how do you feel about wearing masks these days? Good or bad? I have to wear a stupid mask every time I go to the grocery store. When someone's wearing a mask, I don't know if they're agreeing with me or are they secretly <laughs> laughing at me. I forgot to wear a mask when I was with this lady's grandson. I heard she passed away soon after, a week later. It's my fault. I know I'm supposed to wear a mask, but look at them! They're not wearing one! Those teenagers, they act as if every day is a party day. What should I do? People stare at me when I don't wear a mask. I feel naked without a mask. Is something wrong with me? I wish the mask had never gone to me. I wish none of this had happened. So do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All you have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to you. While some people still haven't wrapped their heads around the idea of wearing a mask, you know what? While humans have been staying still or walking backwards, the coronavirus already evolved. It moved forward. It's now already one step ahead of us. So with the new COVID-19 variant from UK, Brazil, and South Africa, there are 70 percent more contagious than before. And it doesn't stop there. It gets worse. Although you might feel a little bit false sense of security saying that you social distance and you already wear a mask. But hey, the old trick is not going to work this time. You see, sometimes when you walk into an open space, how do you know that that area is safe? To illustrate, an aerosol, an airborne particle containing a live virus, can live up to three hours. It can float there for three hours. So when you're in open space, let's say again, maybe two hours ago, there were a lot of people there. Their particles that contain the virus are still floating around in the air. By the time you've arrived, you thought there was nobody there. And hence, you, you lose your guard and you breathe in the virus just when you thought there was no one and you wanted to face ID, unlock your phone, or just get a breather. Another idea is you try to maintain your six feet distance from another person. Let's say you try to maintain 12 feet. You think that by staying that distance away, you are being extra safe. But seldom did you know. Actually, the space that you're standing in already is contaminated. So what do you do when you're facing such an invisible, formidable 
adversary. Social distancing has limited help. The only thing I think you can do at this point, besides getting a vaccine, what everyone needs to do is really put on one of these. However, that is impossible because we're in short supply and if even if we did have any supply, it would be reserved for the first line healthcare workers. Now, that leaves the rest of us. What should we do? Thankfully, the scientific community and Dr. Fauci has already devised a really good strategy for the public. Look at this. What you're seeing right now is me wearing two masks. A surgical mask in the inside and a cotton mask on the outside. This can deliver a much better filtration efficiency than one alone. And it's very easy to do. Now, some people have discussed which should be on the inside and which should be on the outside. Theoretically, when you have when you have each of these layers stacked against each other no matter which side is in the front it should still have the same filtration efficiency but practically speaking the greatest fallacy to that reasoning is that it omits the idea of leakage you see According to scientists who are doing an experiment, even poking one or two holes to make leakage in the mask, 1% leakage resulted in around 50% decrease in the optimal filtration efficiency. And when they went up to 2% leakage, it was already down to only a third. So that is a very big reckoning that even if you wear a N95 mask, if you keep on touching the surface, which is already contaminated, if you keep on taking it off, if you grow a beard, it can still have leakage and result in its efficiency greatly reduced. Which is why if you wear this type of mask tightly onto your skin, can sometimes beat an N95 mask if worn improperly. Now getting to the point which side should be in the front, which side in the back. Some would say okay let me put the cotton mask in the inside because it feels comfortable. Sometimes uh, these non-woven types have little uh, fibers that can be very ticklish. Okay, and since this has a better filtration efficiency than the cotton one, we'll may put the most highly effective one on the outside. Now, that logic sounds kind of good, except for the engineering part. You see, the cotton is very soft and it can slide very easily. Just opening my mouth a couple of times, my, my nose is already sticking out. Plus, since the cotton mask doesn't have a really good fit on the skin, that means if looking on the side and from up top here, there are already some leakages. Even when you put a mask on, a surgical mask on the outside, it still does not fit really strongly because it's not pressing hard against all around the sides from the top to the bottom. It's not pushing uniformly strongly enough onto uh, the cotton mask which is already not fitting on the inside. Imagine something that really doesn't conform to the face of the face you have 
for instance, some, a flat surface. A flat surface that slams against my face. And no matter how many layers I lay on top of that, there's still going to be some space here. Let me demonstrate how to wear a double mask properly and why it is effective. First of all, put the surgical mask on your face. Then, pull the top part that has a wire inside and pinch it. Pinch it all around your nose through your cheekbones so that air doesn't leak through the top. Now, the bottom part, have it cover your whole chin. Have it cover your whole chin so that it doesn't move around. All right, so this is a single layer. But as you know, when we talk, we move our, our mouth around. You move our mouth around. And then this is already creating some space from here, also some space from here. That's how a second layer of masking really helps. So, even though one cotton mask is not very effective and it's on the outside, but this serves a very strong purpose in stabilizing the mask to have a stronger fit onto your skin, which was already quite fit from before. Even when I move around, it's keeping everything in place, keeping it sealed from all the angles. Although it's not conforming as well like putting two surgical masks on, but it still applies pressure to lots of spaces necessary. Now I'm going to demonstrate you to the idea of three masks. So some might have difficulty trying to purchase a surgical mask. Scientists in these days, they have already studied how to use 48 types of household materials from shirts to vacuum bags to tissue paper um, to bandage, all different sorts of material. They looked and looking down the link below, it shows you the whole list. Basically, the idea is that if you have two uh, layers, for instance, if I have two cotton ones that are quite weak in general, I can lay in the middle another uh, material that may have a higher filtration efficiency. Or if it doesn't, just adding a layer will be more efficient. I can't tell you exactly how much, like exactly it will become 76% or become 80%. I can't tell you that directly because I really don't know what type of uh, material you're going to use. But for instance, this is one layer and I just put, let's say, a tissue paper. Even with a tissue paper, and then I layer another cotton mask on top of it. This is already stronger than just one mask alone. This is stronger than just two cotton masks alone because I have an additional third layer in the middle. Now this is a very quick hack and you can always put um, different materials in the middle depending on your, um, your budget. In this article he used 48 different types of materials from vacuum bags to coffee filters to flannels, paper towel, tissue, silk, swimsuits. Um, notably, uh, if you really dig in, there are many choices that we can use. Some, particularly when facing a charged particle, because certain um, aerosols, um, airborne particles, can ionize uh, through the air, or even when they're attaching to uh, surfaces. So that means when you have charged um, surfaces like the vacuum bag, it can be really effective at attracting um, small particles that have a charge. But quickly, when you look at another uh, measure, which is 
pressure drop, you realize some materials, although they have really high efficiency, it really becomes really difficult to breathe once you uh, put it on. And to me, that translates to impracticality. For the public, you would like to take it off and get a breather, you would touch your mask more often, which is already very contaminated because of the high filter quality, and it won't be effective anymore. So, uh, minding um, your personal um, tolerance for uh, discomfort and breathability, um, you could also choose other types of materials that are shown on this list. Try this out and I hope you can stay safe and remember to hit the like button if you learned anything new today. I hope we are saving lives and we are changing lives and keeping ourselves enriched. Stay safe. Have a good day. Bye-bye.